we are here to play some Last Epoch, an action RPG I enjoy very much. Uh, we played some on Saturday. I had a shoot with it, so I decided to do it a little bit more. We're currently level 26 on our character. There is a link in the what game uh, with that links to the build for anyone who knows, uh, who, who wants to see rather. Now, one little kerfuffle at the start of the stream, I did go and clean up the inventory. I tweaked things. I looked to see if there was any more uniques in my stash that I might want to use. And then I decided to do a crafting to uh, burn down uh, some of the um, uh, forging potential in some of the items. And annoyingly, <laughs> My uh, offhand item over here, this book, I got a I got a crit while crafting, so I think I was increasing the uh, cold resistance, and I think it critted, and I either got a second point of cold resistance or I got a tick up of cold damage. I think it was the cold resistance because it's quite high. Yeah, it's it's rank five, so I think I, I was at three. I tried to bring up the four, it crit, so I got a five, and now it's so high level I'm not gonna be able to use it for twelve levels. So I just threw on this uh, close call uh, unique shield that was in my inventory just so that we've got something in our offhand, but we'll clearly be shopping around for that. And um, yeah, as as right now, I'm enjoying our build, which is this sort of like, we just we just move forward with our flame rush and things die from like secondary effects, generally speaking. So that's pretty fun. We're about to fight a boss, if I recall correctly in here. So we're gonna have to play it a little differently. Hopefully I don't uh, forget all my controls, but yeah, we can go ahead, click these orbs, get the bridge up. And then it's a map transmission over here to the Sanctum Bastille. Yeah, the, the Super Bowl isn't called World Series, so you, the joke's not quite the same. The, the funny one is always for baseball, right? It's like the World Series of baseball, but like... I mean, yeah, okay, there's there's some Canadian teams involved, but it's like, it's hardly a World Series. Oh, I tried to use that as a uh, blink, which is not how that works. Do -do -do. All right, I gotta get used to uh, get used to our build. So yeah, we just sort of like developed this on the fly. Never played Rude Master before. I'm definitely not following a build guide. And right now we're at the point where all we do is we sort of flame rush, get usually a t couple of ticks of the uh, the runes charged up, release flame rush. It automatically casts my invocation. Oh, is this one of those, one of those mage fights? This thing was fun. This boss fair be a trickier now, is it? Yeah. All right, and our filter is now set up to show um, experimental items. So let's go ahead and pop this mage. Hit him with the Mega Ball. And it's really annoying they do spawn under this thing and it kind of screws with the um, the line of fire. So we're stacking a lot of ignites. We're mostly setting people on fire. We're also stacking a fair amount of crits. In practice, I'm not sure that um, how much DPS the ignites are actually uh, contributing. I suspect the majority of our damage is from the direct fire hits, and we should probably optimize around that, especially with the crit. Um, I was operating a little bit on the idea that crits automatically um, trigger the affliction, which is apparently not the case in Last Epoch. I was uh, almost certainly getting confused with another game. So increasing crits doesn't land extra ignites. Yeah, I, I still think, I, I uh, realize I, I should probably do a full reinstall. I mean, unless it's just a normal known bug, but um, there's something with my uh, my text that didn't do that, and I forgot to do a validate file. So the experimental items are dropping without visible text for whatever reason. Um, that is a nice quill, but I think the Tome of the Elements we're going to keep using for a good long time. We got experimental booties over here. It's got the ward when you do a traversal. Didn't we get that on the last item? I don't remember. Was this done or can I click on it? It sort of looks clickable, but I think it's done. Yeah, we're kind of building the crits, uh, and I think it's still going to be the idea. But again, I, I I thought the crits were going to do double duty. He <laughs> duty by um. Where the hell do I go? Oh, down here. Um, by doing the ignites, but apparently it's not the case. But I think it's still worth building heavily onto crits. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to check to see. Um, if any of the the, the skill trees or anything have anything that synergizes with crits. I mean, crits are never bad because. You know, it's just considerably more damage. But is there anything we can optimize around? Uh, some of that could come later, maybe with like um, some kind of uniques. Right, there might be uniques where it's like, oh, when you crit with a fire or lightning or cold spell or whatever the heck, then uh, do extra thingy. I don't know what the unique pool is. I was also trying to give some thought as to um, like, so this character is going to get put into the, the so-called Legacy League when 1.0 drops. 
as opposed to the seasonal league. But as far as I can tell, there's nothing special going on with the seasonal league right now. It's just everyone's going to restart at level zero. And I guess there's going to be a leaderboard and stuff like that. But I don't you know, particularly care about that. I mean, I'm not even going to play in the first few days of the, uh, the league. So it's not like I'm ever going to be in the lead of any of those things. Um, and so I'm wondering about maybe just staying in the, the legacy league. So let's say hey for my fiance. So hey, hey. Well, hello, uh, uh, Ms. Danish Butter. Well, sorry, I shouldn't assume. Statistically speaking, but... I mean, really, the most appropriate would be if it was if uh, if your fiance was Marge, Margarine. Is it terrible? Terrible. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, we should probably be dropping the Gambler's Fallacy. We don't have insane base crit rate yet, but we're re I think we're really at the point where we're, we're shopping for something to replace uh, Gambler's Fallacy. I said Legacy, but Fallacy. Uh, because I we are content continuously... I should probably deal with the boss here. Oh, I'm using the wrong button. All right, you're dropping Void. I don't know what my Void resistance is at. If we uh, if we have a hard time here, it looks it looks like it's gonna be okay. I'm, I'm mostly fine at dodging. There's nothing crazy going on. Our damage seems to be decent. You know, it's about a third of the way dead already. This, this seems like it's gonna be fine. Uh, but if there's issues, I could I could check to see if I could I can bump up my void resistance. I still don't know if the uh, the the triple rune mega fireball is the ideal single target thing for us to be using right now. I, I kind of suspect that doing the one tick and then firing off this thing and landing some some blows with the spinny thing might actually be one of the more useful things for us. But Danish people only go for real butter. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> the two shards in your possession resonate with power. The last shard lies ahead. Taking it will form the evil. All right, so we got the uh, the full super timey wimey manipulation device. Oh, and I was reading um, um, the details about these load times, and I guess what's happening in the current iteration, the problem is when you click to do an instance, it's like spinning up almost like a, a new little server instance uh, when you do that. So that's why there's like this delay in in setting it up. So hopefully they're they're just do redoing that architecture for. 1.0. Unfortunately, that means it's not as quite as simple a fix of like, all right, let's just do some benchmarking and figure out what the delay is. Um, so they're going to have to find like a, maybe some sort of pooling system or something like that. Apparently that load time delay isn't an issue when, once you get to monoliths, which is the end game, because um, the monolith hub, I guess, is the same server instance as when you actually zone into a monolith. So the load I times become basically we have instant. identified when the void began to sweep over the world. And who is likely responsible? The year many travelers have come and gone before you. The information gleaned from their adventures makes many things possible. What do I need to do? Centuries before the world was ruined, it faced a different threat. The Immortal Empire. Yeah, we, we crushed that boss. Our damage, I think our damage is pretty good. The machine gun fireball is doing pretty good single target damage. Mockery of life. These undead fiends hunted the living at the whim. It's possible that when we fight a boss, we don't have to worry about using the mega fireball. The stream's at 720p. Uh, I can click and, and pick uh, 1080. Version Aurora. We believe uh, I don't know if anyone else can confirm. Read for power. Yours at 1080? Okay. The void upon the world. I mean, by default, Twitch will set it to auto, so it might pull it down. Chance a changing fate. The epoch will guide your way. It knows the weavings of fate far better than any of us. Seek out the outcast queen. I cannot do that. No, I can do that. I just accidentally right clicked. All right. Go, go, go. 
Mm -hmm. Watching 1060 or 160 for the lulls. I can't remember. I think you can go down 320p before, and then I don't think it degrades the sound too much. I think at 1060 it gets a little, or 160 it gets a little worse. Um, but I've done that before for, um, like when I'm just purely trying to listen to something for the audio. It's like, well, I'm just going to put the, the bit rate I way down. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I'm trying to uh, do warp that. around. Such a long walk to get into town here with no mobility skill. Like, come on, game. I like how shitty our shield is. Look, look, how is this an effective shield? Someone could just stab us through this. You're trying to take cover for, from arrows. You still just get shot completely through. Maybe that's why it has 50% uh, less blocking effectiveness. Kind of makes sense. Close call. It's just all about dodging. You know what? Now the art makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's not really a good shield for blocking at all. All right, let's uh, click through these, yes? step some quests, go kill some things. Stay safe. Uh, I guess I'll go to the gray area. Oh, I right, this is the um, the intro to the forge, which we've been using. I just realized we get sent down here later on anyway, but they just like, here, click on the forge one time. It's like, yep, all right, good. I know how to use the forge, thanks. What do you want? The fact that the forges are physically present on the map makes me think that originally the idea was that you'd go there and then finally they're like, you know what? We're just going to let people hit F to access it. So it feels like the forges are just relics of a much earlier time on the map. It's kind of surprising they haven't removed it yet, but maybe in 1.0 they'll be removed. We got 720 app, TV app really sucks sometimes. Oh, maybe that's... Well, and that's it. And the thing is, the TV app... <clears throat> It could be that um, the API the TV app uses to interact with Twitch, maybe Twitch only sends it out to 720 max. Twitch has also got a bunch of different like servers you can connect to to watch. And sometimes what'll happen is, you know, some people will be lagging. Um, I gotta remember my hotkeys. Uh, some people will be will be lagging in things and other people won't. And it's just like, well, what Twitch server do you happen to be connected to? Which is not something... How come I only jumped to there? Did I hit a tree root? That was weird. Like, stop my movement as if I'd hit an object. Yeah, the little, uh... The, the machine gun fireball is very satisfying. Yeah, I have no idea what our final build is going to look like. But for, for this particular junction in the game, this just, like, me holding down my mobility skill until it gets two charges and then releasing... Feels excellent. This fireball uh, passive that's challenge. I think I did see that. Oh. Why am I hitting the E when I'm close to things? I don't know. Or it's because sometimes when I hit the E, like it hits things, but of course if I don't have a charge, all it does is give me a little bit of shield. Alright, we leveled up again. Um, I think that what's probably going to happen at some point is I'm probably going to spec out of reactive ward because we actually aren't stacking very much ward right now. It is nice as an emergency button because if we get low, it wards us, you know, that that might be good. Um, it does scale up with more health. On the other hand, I could just just get more raw health. Um, so we might end up respecking out of that and putting some into just scholar or something. Or we could consider um, some pips into mage flurry for the cast speed. If we got up to three pips, we'd get a cooldown recovery speed increase to teleport. Not that we're currently using it, but that's something to consider. But for now, we're just going to keep going down Rune Master. Um, we've been putting things into Never Late here. Oh, yeah. Traversal skill and then crit, which we traversal skill constantly. So it seems like a good thing. And then if we get to the five points in here, it'll double the crit chance for things that cost 30 or more, which is the big mega fireball. So again, we're, we got to get rid of the, uh, the gambler's fallacy, but... Right now, we, we just haven't found another um, relevant necklace in any way. Why am I stopping to kill this? I could be like Sonic here. I just got to go fast. Hey, Will, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. There's a new subscriber. Convent, hey. Thanks for the sub. These staircases, I think any elevation 
um, sort of inter interrupts the uh, the flame burst or flame dash or whatever this is called. Flame, flame rush. Mage is Aphex? Did I miss an item? Hope they buff the mob density a bit for leveling process. Can be a bit desolate until the monolith has some tile sets. Yeah, some are better than others, I guess. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the uh, gray arrow first, which is the side quest. On that arcane quilt. Did I leave one on the ground? Oh, that's possible. Now, I think the arcane quill goes into the slot with the Tome of Elements, right? Yeah. Which right now, our Tome of Elements is doing some great things for us. So, not in a hurry to necessarily replace that. Oh, should have let it go at the two. Oh, is this the thing we can't get through, right? Yeah. We need some info and then it's like, okay, I'm going to have to do time travel abuse to get through that door. Oh, yes, the class A fixes are high value shutter curry. That's entirely correct. Nice to see them that burn down. Okay, like, our ignites are definitely doing enough because we can clearly see the situations where we're not one-shotting these guys, but they're still then burning down from our ignites, which are fairly common. We have a lot of ignite modifiers. I don't know how high it is. For all I know, we're, like, we've stacked enough that we can get double ignites. Get down there. I may have to go this way. I'm not sure. I don't remember the layout. It might be around this here, actually. Maybe both ways are valid. Hey, Quill, pay attention. There's a new subscriber. A silly poo! <laughs> Thanks for the sub! Yes. Oh, I've saved you. Gods be with you. Uh, gods be with you, too. Like the minimap? Yeah. All right, and yeah, you can tab to have the overlay. Use a slightly bigger and um, more helpful minimap in Warframe as well. Hello, Glyph of Despair. Nice. Oh, geez, I didn't realize I was taking so much damage from these guys. What kind of damage are they doing? Purple, I wonder if that's Void? Oh, necrotic, maybe. Warframe minimap is small. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's really tiny. Who are you? How come I'm not getting a tool tip for you? I'm not getting... Yeah. I mean, he's tough enough. He must be a rare. I think I really do need to do a file validation. Alright. Yeah, a bunch of shit. His unique name, Ahmad. Yeah. Killing him was entirely optional, but fun. Oh yeah, I should really check to see what my necrotic resistance is, because that's what we're seeing a lot of here, I think. I know there's a, there's a few mobs in a certain chapter that, like, every time I got there, like, solo, or when I played multiplayer, and we get there, my, my people would just start dying left and right. And I think it's mostly because of the sheer amount of, like, hype damage. Oh yeah, we only have 3% necrotic resistance. That's... 
not ideal. Oh, I think I have to fight a little gauntlet here. Do I just click on it? No. Hey, level 28. We've already leveled twice since the start of the stream. I actually considered loading up like Path of Exile today. Or Grim Dawn. Just like, let's just cycle through some ace RPGs. But like, no, no, let's let's focus on this guy. A little more. I was really enjoying him. Can I go through? Thank you. Rush really charges these runes quickly. Well, part of it is because my my casting speed, quote unquote, with our fireball is so low because it's got to fi fire multiple projectiles. If nothing else, I do have to revisit the Path of Exile because I haven't played it in forever. Of course, I keep playing um, Grim Dawn all the time. We haven't played Grim Dawn since the, the big patch that changed a lot of mechanics. It would be interesting to have a conversation about that. Lots of quality improvements in that Grim Dawn patch. Changing the way potions work completely. Uh, redoing the looting balance. Changing the way passive skills work. Or toggles, rather, I should say. Basically turn toggles into passive skills. It was like, you, why would you ever have a character that had buffs that you can toggle on that would ever not want to be running the buffs, basically? And because and, it's annoying because when you die, you respawn in with your, your buffs turned off. But then sometimes what happens, you play for a while, and you're like, oh shit, I don't have my buffs. This is the problem all the time in uh, Path of Exile as well. Um, and then Grim Dawn, finally, they're like, listen, here's the deal. If you specced into a toggleable buff, it's just on all the time now. And I, I, I was like, I wonder if there's a use case where I would be unhappy about that. And I really couldn't come up with one. Uh, we just got the waypoint, so we should go through this time portal and see where it brings us. Corrupted Lake. Lake Lyo guy. Uh, this landscape is making it quite difficult to use my abilities because it keeps hitting geometry. Aren't we still kind of wishes we'd done the lightning thing? On the other hand, I always go lightning, so it oops, so it's actually quite nice that I just ended up going into a fire build. Mm -hmm. Do you swap between an AoE and a single target buff? Yeah, I, I know if there's an example of that in Grim Dawn, but you're right. If there was one, then it could be. Like, if there was a buff that when it's on, you would do more damage. You would do bigger AoEs, but less damage overall, and you flip it around, you do more damage, but no AoE, then that would be a thing. But yeah, there's nothing like that in Grim Dawn. And yeah, Grim Dawn does use the mana reserve system, which is great. Path of Exile does as well. Um, I think that um, one of the things I disliked about um, uh, Diablo 3, and I don't know what the situation is in Diablo 4, is it didn't use the mana reservation system. And a lot of the buffs, like, they weren't they weren't so much toggles. They were, like, buffs that, like, last for 30 seconds or a minute. And it's like, so I'm, I'm constantly having to, like, re-click this button in a way that isn't interesting. It's not a fun decision, it's just pure monotony. Why are you making me do it? And yeah, I will have to give D4 another try. So people are saying, I think, like, what, season four or something is coming soonish? 
it might be worth checking then. Wait, that this this is a dead end? I wonder if there's a loop around that way, but there's a little area down here I didn't get to. I'd assume this would go over there. I don't remember this map map layout, so. Nope, that's a dead end. Okay. So I mean there's still a little bit there. I guess there were a couple of chests there, but no quest. No, that's a dead end, so... Nah, I do have a memory of this, and then you loop around this way and it comes there. Didn't they change the reservation system recently? Um, I think they're... I'm trying to remember, is the reservation system no longer a thing? They might have gotten rid of the, um... I mean, again, they changed the way that, that toggle buffs work, so they're always on. I think, I feel like they might have gotten rid of, like, the the buffs use mana part. Did they also get rid of the buffs reserve mana? Because it used to be a lot of the toggles were like, we'll reserve mana, and we may also have, like, a mana cost per second. I mean, it's small. It doesn't feel like you're costing you per second. It was mostly just, like, it feels like my mana regen rate is lower. And I can't remember what it is. And I've, I've played it not too long ago. Oh, no, it hasn't been streamlined that much. But, like, the toggle thing was, like, like silly. Like, again, why would I ever not want to have my toggle on? So, like, all right, we'll just have it always have the toggle on. And they ran a long beta for it as well. Um, so, like, players had tons of time to give feedback, and, I mean, it clearly made it through the feedback process. People were basically universally like, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't see any problem with this in any way whatsoever. It seems like a no-brainer. The potion streamlining is mechanically exactly the same as it was before. Or, um, functionally, I should say, the same as it was before. Um, but you don't, you don't actually have potions. You don't pick up potions. Because it was meaningless. Like, after the first, like, 37 seconds of the game, you're always going to have an infinite amount of potions in your inventory. Because you can just buy a bunch or whatever. Like, it, the actual potions were meaningless. So the only thing that mattered is the potions cool down. So they're like, okay, listen, we're going to get rid of potions as an item because they were pointless. And they're just going to be just cool down your bars. They're going to work exactly the same as before, but you're not going to use up two random slots from your inventory and occasionally have to click shit. Like, pick, pick up pointless, unexciting items from the ground. But yeah, the mechanics of it are the same. They didn't change it to work like Last Epoch or, you know, Grim or Path of Exile or anything like that. <laughs> Alright, we got a little boss fight here. Get the Prophet of Ruin. Definitely taking some beats from this guy. Up, 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 boom. Up, 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 boom. Up, 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 up. Is... Tell me when this gets annoying. Oh, already annoying? Okay. Up, 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 boom. Didn't say I was going to stop. I just wanted to make sure the annoyance was effective. All right, boss fight over, right? But this was Grim Dawn, and I love Grim Dawn. Again, Grim Dawn's probably my favorite R ARPG. This were Grim Fight, Grim Dawn, the fight would basically be over. But no, we get little set. I mean, this is not the most exciting little set piece boss, but like it still stands out. It's not just a mob with more health. Grim Dawn is fantastic, but they sure hell need better bosses. The people working on Titan Quest 2, are they. Like, I wonder if any of the same developers and designers from Titan Quest or Grim Dawn or anything like that are on there. It's back over... Back over at THQ. I can't remember the company behind it, but... I'm not... They, they you know, it's the company that owns the IP, but is it necessarily any of the same developers anymore? Mm-hmm. Oh, you're talking about Grim Dawn? Yeah, Grim Dawn, there's no, um, 
well, you can technically, there is the cloud system for Grim Dawn, but it doesn't enforce it. You can have, you know, your offline characters, you can cheat whatever you want with your, uh, your thing. I mean, I don't normally play these action RPGs with strangers, so I don't particularly care what anyone does on their, on their individual accounts. That's one thing that stands out with Warframe. I actually do seek out playing with strangers in Warframe, which is weird and I never do it. All right, we're going to finish off the Ward of Regi here just to get maximum Ignite chance on our abilities with the Raw Runes. And then what are we going to do? So for a while, we were talking about going to a Mastery of the Invoker. But that's when I was thinking about using the Rune Bolt, which we might still do to shuffle things around. Um, if we go and scribe Pattern, then we do get... Um, we'll get a crap ton of mana regen. Not that mana's been an issue for us, although at some point, theoretically, it might. If we put just one point in here, it's enough to get down to Author of Arcana. And we do directly cast our Runic Invocations. We were thinking about maybe automating it. Oh, no, sorry. We're not directly casting it. It's being cast by our Flame Rush, so... I mean, sometimes we cast it manually as well. It adds a lot of damage. It's interesting. Oh, right, and that leads us to Immutable Order, where we can, we can plan things on our skill bar. I don't know if we need to do that. After we cast Runic Invocation, it doesn't say I need to cast directly. You gain additional spell damage and cast speed. Maybe that? We don't tend to put in the Gone Runes, which is from Lightning. Blink forward after cast. Yeah, we're not going to do this. Um, damage per rune consumed. Sends us backwards. Damage per type of runes, but we're mostly single casting it. If we go and scribe Pattern, rather than go down to Author of Arcana, what else do we get? Word of Herod, well, that's if we do the chill thing. Oh yeah, this is if we don't cast Runic Energy, except we do cast it quite often. What's this one? Elemental Lore. Elemental Penetration per three Intelligence. That actually seems like a good idea. You gain runes faster while channeling. Now, what's interesting about this, so we are f channeling with the Flame Dash. And arguably, apparently, as it was reminded me, you, we could change our fireball to be kind of a uh, channeled spell instead. That would be interesting. Now, I don't actually need the flame dash channel faster right now, because what it would mean is we'd get up to three runes much faster, which is the big fireball. But when I'm flame dashing around, I actually just want two runes for the, the like, fireball lit, you know, whatever we call it, where it's like just aoing fireball, little tiny fireballs all over the place. So I don't think I need that. This per rune, which again, we tend to do two instead of three, but on the boss fight, we get more. I mean, do we just get bigger areas? This is elemental pen and area. Oh, this is only a one point wonder here. Maybe we focus on that. I don't know if we go to Mastery of Invocation, but I can pick up this, and then we can put a bunch into Elementist's Call. I mean, just a bunch of Elemental Penetration. Uh, this is when we directly cast it. Never mind. Dang it. This is still good for area, again, for clear. Our Mega Fireball would be huge. All right, let's put a point into Elemental Lore, because the Penetration's got to be useful. Um, we've got, I think, 15 or 18 points of Int right now, so it gives us a little bit of something-something. In terms of the Fireball... We're at two of three over here. Oh, yeah, for base crit. More projectiles. We only get half the value for embers and increase the mana cost. I don't know if we're excited to go here. Uh, this converts crit into stun instead, which we don't want. We could put the final point into Skier's Gambit. Which might be a decent idea. Oh, um, there's another way to get crit points. This is less crit per skill point I put in, but it doesn't slow down the casting speed. It leads to Plasma Ball, which turns half the fire into lightning. It gains lightning tag. Presumably it still has the fire tag. If I do this, I wonder what runes I get. I wonder if it's random or alternates. You know, sometimes I get a fire rune, sometimes a lightning rune. Pierce, but more mana cost. Oh, we could just stack a bunch of Ignite. 
and then the spreading flame. This is if we want to focus a lot more on damage over time. More crit chance against ignited en enemies. Hold on. That's what we're going to do. To the point where I'm actually wondering if Skira's Gambit is even where I want to go. So we can do this. Higher chance to ignite. And then more crit chance against ignited enemies. And just keep sort of stacking that. Oh yeah, Fire Shred. Fireball hits of a chance to reduce enemy fire resistance. Um, flammability is 100% where we want to go. We can go cast speed. I think the ignite is probably... These are sort of 50-50. I mean, obviously, if I want to go burning runes, I have to get conflagration and I want more ignite chance regardless. What does adept also lead to? More damage, less mana. And also unchained fire. Oh, this just makes one bigger fireball. Oh, more damage for each extra projectile, but no longer fires extra projectiles. Oh. Well, we'd want to we'd want to pull out of embers. Um, because the sequence fire and all those things doesn't actually help us. We could pick up everything that gives extra projectiles and just do big single ones. And this is the channeled ability version, which I don't know. It's also quite short range. Holy shit. I think I'm going to go conflagration to reach flammability. But all that pondering was, how do we get the flammability? Apparently I've got two ranks put into flame rush. I kind of think I might just finish Solar Rush here, even though I only needed one dot in it to like reach other things afterwards. I guess we could pick up the Ember Wake. I'll just generate some runes that'll do some shit automatically for us. Um, I mean, we could pass through things to Shred, and that's that's not bad. I don't know if I'm planning on going through Fire Eater or anything, though. I don't know. Let's try Ember Wake for a little while and see how it feels. <clears throat> Looks up the developer, Titan Quest 2, German developer, Crate Entertainment based in Massachusetts, probably no crossover. Well, I knew it wasn't going to be Crate, but the question was, um, because Crate Entertainment isn't the company that made the original Titan Quest, but a lot of those developers are. And so I wondered if maybe some of them have gone over, but it wouldn't surprise me if it's an entirely new team. Okay, where are we? Corrupted Lake, but are we done here? I don't actually see a quest marker. Oh yeah, because we killed the boss and then we just, yeah, so we're good to go somewhere else. Um, studying times over here. Oh, that's to enter the thingy. I'm just going to come here. It's like 80% old TQ devs, at least in the beginning it was. Not heard about Iron Danger, no. So there we went. We just went through that to get to the Corrupted Lake. Now I got to come here and do a little area defense quest, right? Pick an Oracle or something. I don't remember this rock. Right. That's it. Yes. Good luck. The zone feels changed. Okay, this part feels familiar. I'm gonna get the end over here. That's where the outcast is. Da -da 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 -da. And we gotta defend you for a little while. Yeah, okay. What level are we now? We are now level 29. So three levels since the start of the stream. I mean, we're not, you know, we're not doing this at warp speed, but come on, all right. Don't hit me with necrotic damage. I have no necrotic resistance, please. Welcome, traveler. 
Uh, technically, I did bang out a couple of side quests. Um, mostly just turn in some quests at the end of the video. Oh, I didn't realize I have a couple of extra slots over here. Um, that actually could change our, uh, our idol setup. Next time I'm in town, let's try to remember to check our available idols. I think we could make a nice little change. I like the ease of play that we've got going on here. I mean, it's not like pet build laziness, but it's pretty convenient. You know, like I don't like playing piano builds where I have to deal with like 10 different hotkeys. I mean, it, that's actually literally not possible in here because the most skills you can have on your hotbar is five. That's what the game is designed around. There's no secondary hot bar. That's not what they're, that's not how it's meant to be played. You've got these five skills, which presumably are the five that you ultimately specialize in. Once you reach, what's the 50? 50 is the last specialization slot. Now, arguably when I first saw that, I'm like, ooh, is this gonna be too casual? And then I'm like, hold on. I don't think that's that's necessarily true because in um, in other ARPGs, sometimes you can have a lot more skills in your bar, but you don't actually tend to use that many of them. Sometimes it's more like there's a bunch of auras and stuff that you're toggling on and off or whatever. And here, the game design is a little bit differently. I, th I think the five active uh, skills is a decent amount. Well, and you're right, the skill the, the rune master does have more than more than five. Still only the five buttons, but what was it? There was like 40 different invocations or something, or is it more than that? More than that, I don't remember. Someone will chat, I'll have the number. Kind of ridiculous. 40, yeah, okay. I'm mostly just using, I mean, sort of four, because sometimes I hit E by accident, so I get a little flame ward if you've got no runes. And sometimes I do it with one, we get the little spinny things, and sometimes I do it on purpose, but mostly I'm focusing on the two, and I'm not even casting it manually. Like for the, yeah, for the mapping here, I'm just holding down well, it's my R, but I've got it mapped to space as well. Holding it down, channeling a couple of ticks, releasing it. And then if we've got something bigger to kill, then I right click for my fireballs and either do two or three charges depending on if I still need to kill some adds or if I just want a single target in one area. Play testing Iron Danger in development, though I wasn't very active, but it seemed like a game you'd like. Is it an action RPG? It's like Iron Danger. Tactical combat puzzler, unique time manipulation mechanics. Sounds like it would give me a headache and I would love it. Here, I'm just gonna do it twice because we got lots of ads to kill. And yeah, with a lot of the items, if it's not going to help me level, a lot of times I'm really not going to stress about it um, because the idea is we just want to keep moving, advance the game further because the loot's just going to constantly get better as we go. So I definitely don't want to spend time, you know, fiddling around with my inventory if I don't have to. I think I've got to uh, change some colorizing on some items here. I heard someone say I love a headache. But you know the games we play, sometimes it's like, oh my god, I'm getting such a headache from this game. I'm enjoying it, but my brain hurts. You know, it's like a good workout. Like, ah, oh, I'm so sore, but oh, it feels good. Not that I've had my gym membership since be since COVID. Ah, uh, so good for such a long time. Hey, level 30. Lordy, lordy, look who's 30. Are you someone special that I gotta kill for any reason? No. You just look like something in another zone. Okay. It's like really spicy food, you love the burn. Yeah, 
I love spicy food so much. Although, I think now when I have too much, that's actually some of the times when I end up with a sore throat. I think it might, like, I don't feel like I ever get heartburn. Maybe it's an overnight thing. Maybe it's like overnight after I've had a bunch of spicy food. Maybe I'm getting a little heartburn or something. I don't know. I feel like I'm having to pull back, which is a shame. Because that's always on my like birthday and Christmas list and everything like that. It's like, get me hot sauces, baby. Now, ideally, they should be interesting hot sauces with fun flavors. Oh, jeez. Is that her first death? I think it's her first death. I'd have to go back to see, because I think um, it says deathless or something, if you haven't died yet. Nope. No, I died before. Okay. Can you do a slash deaths in this game? Um, I guess with chat disable, I don't even get a command line. Had one early last time. Oh, that's right. We had some difficulty in the very early game as the caster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we've opened up the next tier. Now, it doesn't mean I can't still drop things in here, because it's quite cool. Um, but, Nimbus Walk. The spell damage and crit chance from Neverlate. So, Neverlate is, when I use a traversal skill, which I'm using constantly, my next spell does extra damage and a chance to crit. So, this is the spell damage and crit chance from Neverlate. Now, also applies to traversal skills. And you gain word when you use traversal skills. So if I traversal into traversal, it will get the benefit, although there's a cooldown, so. I mean, it seems like it's worth probably putting at least one point in, just to say. Um, where else do we have here? Well, I don't actually, I can't reach Mental Catalyst because I don't have any of the prereqs. Edict of the Scion. Oh, area and ward per rune on area skill use. That is interesting, because Fireball does have an area, I think Flame Rush is an area. I think everything we're using has an area. So theoretically, this would generate, first of all, A, be bigger, and B, give us some free ward, which is nice. For now, at the very least, I'll put one point in the Nimbus Walk. And we do get ward from using traversal skills, which is nice, because our traversal skills are sending us into the middle of a group of enemies. So having a ward up seems like a pretty good idea. But the other thing that seems like a good idea is, should we go and see if we can get ourselves some necrotic resistance? Because this is brutal. I think there's like one zone early on, like act two or three, where it's like, get some poison resistance. And then after that, I think like the suggestion is usually like, yeah, make sure you get some necrotic resistance. I guess some amount of void as well. But I think like it's, it's these necrotic bats, that, those little green areas on the ground, those things will absolutely F you up. I just disappeared rather than die properly. Oh, now I remember that I did die because I made a joke about people are going to donate one bit per death, right? Which would still not be a heck of a lot because we, we've been pretty solid. Now, most ARPGs, the campaigns, especially if like if it's not something that's got like a like a nightmare and then a hell difficulty kind of thing, right? Like D2 or Grim Dawn still has that. Usually, especially if you've played before, you're not going to die. What's the blue question mark bar above the green health bar? I wonder if it's gone. Oh, wait. No, about the green health bar. Is there something above my head? Is it these things? Oh, on the person ward. The blue bar. Oh! You're not saying there was a blue question mark. <laughs> you're saying the blue, I think, bar above? Yeah, that's my ward. So this is a, it's an like, additional hit points. Some games might call it something like Overguard or whatever, but it's it's basically an extra health shield above things. It decays over time. So I did pick up the Ember Wake. Oh, I've been watching to see if it like if it's really triggering. Chance to create a rune ember on kill during flame rush. I don't know how often we're killing during the flame rush, but we do flame rush a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna go in there and we'll we'll see what happens. Although it wouldn't surprise me if it didn't really lead somewhere useful. Um yeah, I'm just going to... Oh, I need a second point in here. Then we're going to go heavy into flammability. So, every 0.4 seconds of this I channel. I 
it's supposed to give me it's a reactive ward. No. I'm not getting a tooltip for this. It gives me an ember wake. Create a rune ember up to a maximum. Could you, could you leave me alone for a second here, buddy? Thanks. And then for every 0.25 seconds not in flame rush, you fire rune ember. So, I mean, that burns off really quickly. Oh, I can see some little, little tiny little spits of fire. There, yeah, like a, a, it's a little bit confusing because when I'm doing the fire spray, it can be hard, but it looks like a little baby fireball. It's kind of like the fireballs, but smaller. It goes in a straight line as opposed to an arc. It's definitely happening. Yeah, see there? Pew, 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 pew. It doesn't seem to be doing much damage, although the idea is it's just free damage, just extra damage that is happening while we're doing something that we're already doing. It's better than Path of Exile? I mean, that's so hard to say. And the answer, first of all, the answer is currently is no, that this is, this is still definitely in beta. Um, I think I would say that Half Exile is objectively better currently because of the level of content, but that doesn't mean that this isn't uh, more fun for certain players. This is a million times more accessible. Uh, let's assume, let's assume, for the sake of argument, that 1.0 of this comes out. Um, it cleans up all the bugs. It fills in the content that hasn't not there yet, like the missing classes and everything, which we know are going to be there. We know the end game isn't going to be tweaked at 1.0. It is on their plans, but not immediately. Um, but let's judge it on a theoretically bug-free and well-balanced 1.0 release. Um, then the answer is still that Path of Exile has a crap ton more going on. But the difference is going to be, hello, I think that's the first time we've gotten my green color to uh, to show up over here. Um, the difference is that this is a very accessible game, which hopefully doesn't mean bad or poor. Is this the Mana Fused one? No. Which one did I pick up that was... Uh... Hmm, it's a little annoying. Um, let's take a look at this, uh, uh, this amulet, though, because, again, our current crit chance is presumably fairly good, uh, so the Gambler's Fallacy is potentially starting to work against us now. So let's go ahead and put on the Eviscerating Brass Amulet of Embers. It increases the cold damage region helpful for us, but it does increase the crit damage and give us some fire resistance. I like how the required level is four. I did want to mess with the idols as well, that's true. Uh, let's throw on some uh, necrotic resistance here. There we are. And then, um, what's my fire resist at? Oh yeah, the fire resist is the one that I have a lot of, so I don't need to boost that. We'll, uh, we'll craft on a little bit more critical strike multiplier. We'll do this, replace the gambler's fallacy. If we take a look, our critical chance strike is 11. Again, when we put this on, it goes like cray cray because it guarantees it, but then doesn't do it. At 11%, that's going to trigger fairly often. And actually, um, this is a little misleading because our fireball has a much higher base crit chance. So when we use our fireball, which is mostly when we're fighting bosses, we should be critting a lot more. And that's the way we can keep thinking about it, right? The fireball is our single target damage. So if there's anything we can do to optimize around that concept. Oh, is it these red things on the ground? I think those little red glyphs on the ground around me might be, let's see if I hold this for a while. No, no, that's that rude more catalyst. Never mind. But we could clearly see there the extra little fire spits that are happening. This is not a very good uh, layout to use my charge very well, because there's way too many right angles and obstacles. Maps conspiring against me. Yeah, we're, we're get. I think... Hmm. Oh, we're only streaming for another hour. I have to remember when the stream ends that I've got to see about doing a uh, validate the files or even a clean reinstall for all this missing tech stuff. Which is not an issue unique to this game. Like, I don't know what's involved in like setting up a like 
manifest for an update on Steam. But I've seen plenty of games where, oh, you know what, this 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 update, especially during beta and early access and stuff, um, that was not the ability I wanted to use there, um, ends up not doing a proper clean install. So do a complete uninstall and reinstall. Baldur's Gate 3 was even like that. They were like, listen, if you played the um, the early access version, uh, we recommend you do a complete uninstall, make sure the folder gets deleted, and then install the release version. And obviously, Baldur's Gate is a wonderful masterpiece, PG3, and uh, it had that issue. Get off my ship. Do a Grim Dawn series. I mean, we've streamed some Grim Dawn before. We've got a few hardcore characters going on right now. I've never, um... I, I, I haven't uh, finished the, the game. I haven't done the entire, like, ultimate finish with a hardcore character yet. And I would kind of like Hurry. to do that. Hey, yeah, Alaric. Yes. Nice to meet you. Get to the railing and give a signal when you're you know, get to the railing and give a signal when you're ready. He's pretty handsome. Yeah, I'll just put some Nimbus Walk for now so I don't have to think about it. I didn't realize how many freaking passive points I had. But I think we got some from quest rewards. Right, I put that one. I think our mana regen's actually fine. I really don't know what we're going to do here. Maybe it's Crown Scriber, because it's not even direct cast. It's just number of runes. Let me just put a bunch into Crown Scriber of Power for now. And we don't know what our final build's going to end up looking like. Change the voice actor, really. BG1 and 2 were also masterpieces. Yes, absolutely. But the example of the, uh, the Steam patch thing wasn't that quite there. Stop yes. All okay. right. I'll hang back and cover our trap. I'll only slow you down. Let's pop into town. I don't even go have to go to waypoint. Uh, we'll just go to the end of time here. We can find the end of time. Thank you. You can start doing monument monoliths. What? Like, when you get to level 40, level 50. You don't actually have to wait until the end of the game. Usually what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to do questing until... So you can see a little note over here. Some quests give you extra passive points and some give you idle slot rewards. You want to you want to do the campaign to this point, no, no matter what. And then after that, if you want, you could just go into mapping or whatever. But so it's a boo killer. I know. It was, listen, it was an accident. I just recorded some um, Dwarf Fortress today and I was remembering that and I'm very disappointed about things. Okay, so first of all, so we've got plenty more room for idols now. Let me actually, um, okay, let me ditch that. Uh, those there. Now, mage idols. So, every, so we've been using general idols here, which are this one by two or two by ones, or these one by ones. Um, each class also has their own unique idols. Uh, they tend to be bigger and more awkward. So, um, like, I can't fit either one of these here because we need four tiles, like, horizontally, which we can't do. Both of these increase melee and lethal damage, so I wouldn't care about it anyway. I moved these idols over here because these all increase, um, like, they seem to have the most fire stuff that's relevant. Although, I wasn't looking at the big ones. Static charge per second, cold penetration... Chance to cast Elemental Nova when hit. Spell damage, leech while channeling. There's some neat things in there. Shock duration, melee fire. No, okay. So over here, we got Fire Pen with Ignite. Chance to Ignite on hit. Uh, it also has got melee fire damage, which is an unfortunate. But uh, And then this is an 8% chance to cast Fire Aura on kill with fire skills. I don't remember what Fire Aura does. I don't think it's very impressive. Maybe we consider throwing in the Searing Large Arcane Idol of Absorption. Uh, we do channel, that's our flame rush channels. Fire pen with ignite is, we do ignite things. I mean, then we're playing a little bit of Tetris over here, right? How are we going to fit everything in? Let's go to the this tab over here and let's search for necrotic. And, okay, see, I've seen this. I don't know why this doesn't quite, like I typed in necrotic. Why is it showing me this one? This has got necrotic resistance. This doesn't. It has vitality. Might might be showing me everything with vitality for whatever reason. 
I mean, necrotic resistance is nice, but we don't need the bleed on hit, poison on hit, bleed on hit, stun duration. I mean, we could just grab one of these just for the resistance. Yeah, for necrotic resistance, for whatever reason, it's showing us the vitality. Vitality isn't... Oh! Vitality innately gives you poison and necrotic resistance? Oh. I didn't know that. Well, that is plain why it's showing it to us. So, this is nice because it's also got the physical resistance. I mean, in general, I like vitality. I was just mouse you know, passing over things because of whatever. Like, vitality is hit points, which is hard to argue with. So our fire resist is still crazy high. I might consider throwing this idol back in. Although, if I do that, I can't fit both of these. Uh, that's not true. You can do this, that, that. All right, that'll do, that'll do for now. You still have your ARPG ranking overlay used to use? I don't think so. And I kind of think I'm gonna change it. I have been hydrating properly, which means I have to go and dehydrate myself real quick. Be right back, one second. So much better. I was having a hard time focusing. All right, let's uh, evaluate some gear here. Um, I don't think we're going to... You know, these experimental leather boots of hope aren't crazy. Like, it wouldn't be crazy to necessarily equip them. I'm not sure if they're necessarily better than Lessons of Metropolis which has overall more movement speed, which I do like. So I don't I don't think we'll equip. This is the thing that accidentally got extra leveled up here, which we're not going to be wearing for a while anyway. Presumably we'll replace it, but maybe I'll hold on to it just in case. Uh, I don't want to replace the Tome of the Elements right now. Now, some of these things may be something I should shatter, but... We could consider swapping our shield rather than using Close Call here. I know, I think we're probably okay. Necro, fire, cold, physical. I think I'm probably just going to vendor everything here. Uh, That's actually a pretty good belt for us. The extra potion slot, which is nice. We don't get as much raw health, which is too bad. But endurance is nice. It's got the fire damage. Cold doesn't do much for us. Shield synergizes the boots. Oh, you're right, because the boots are giving us tons of dodge. Well, does it synergize? All in all, it may oh, we this gives us health gain when dodged, which the boots help with.
Okay, I'll just sell so we can keep adventuring. Hmm. I was maybe considering the belt. Okay, but we're just gonna keep keep on killing on. Uh, how much? The side quest. Oh, it does give us a passive point, so we do want to do it. Okay. Cultist camp. I cannot do that. Why do you not let me use my abilities in town? I promise I won't kill any of the townspeople. Um, it's because uh, you you could use it before before the multiplayer update, but because the towns are sort of multiplayer hubs, they don't want people spamming a bunch of abilities, which is fair. I mean, Path of Exile is the same. Can't cast abilities in town. This is a lower level area, so things are going to get demolished by a little ability there. Fools. 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 Level 18 area. We're level 30? 31? Now, here's an interesting question for you people. In Diablo 4, I don't know if Diablo 3 was the same way. Maybe, I don't know. But I know for sure it's like this in Diablo 4. Um, you get items that are meant for your class. Whereas in most ARPGs, including older ones like Diablo 2, for example. There was a norm that, like, drops were just just random. You know, lots of stuff you would get wasn't relevant to your class at all. It does make it nice for, you know, uh, collecting gear from maybe an alt or whatever, but me, it means a lot of the shit that drops is not useful. Whereas in Diablo 4, the stuff that drops is... Um, I, I don't know if it's exclusively, but certainly much more weighted to whatever class you happen to be playing. Do people prefer that? I personally like the sort of open format, just random loot, just, you know, whatever. Because it feels, I think I have an objective, a weird, illogical objection to like, well, the loot it's artificial loot. Why is different items dropping in the world? Because I'm a different person. Like that's not realistic. Just a stupid thing to think about. I think that's that's in part also because I do tend to have altitis. I love the idea of just, you know, it doesn't have to be good for me. I'll I'll, I'll use it for someone. Hello, amulet. What are you? Mm. Not for us. And I think I've got one of these. So yeah, so someone who transforms. I say druid, but actually the lich also does that. Um, that's it. That's done here. Good. So now we can come here because we got like an officer's crest or something. So this is, or we, we experienced this earlier here, where we went to a door we couldn't go through, so we had to do a timey-wimey thing. Like being able to find items for, uh, for alts, yeah. Oh. I'm sort of like that when I play D&D as well. Like, obviously, um, you know, it's nice when your DM drops an item that's explicitly meant for your character. Although, one of the nice things is that in D&D, a lot of times it might be part of the story. There's a reason that there's a character-specific item for you over here, and you may have intentionally chosen that. So I guess the equivalent, if you were doing a ARPG or MMO, would be like, here's a class quest that rewards you with a class item. Um, but at the same time, when I play D&D, I really like rolling on the random loot tables. Because it introduces some interesting chaos that, you know, you wouldn't have expected. You know, you're not you're not just looking at the the sort of the, the the favorite items, the top tier items, the whatever. You're gonna roll and you're gonna be like, okay, we got a bag of rodent summoning. Have fun with it. And then sometimes the best stories come out of people using these quirky, less typical magic items to do some funky stuff. But obviously, you can't map D and D to ARPGs and back and forth. Like, if you were to try to play D&D like Baldur's Gate 3, it's like, no, that doesn't... You There are some lessons you could probably take from Baldur's Gate 3 and bring into your D&D game, but that's not the same as 
trying to operate. Like, if imagine you've never played D&D &D before. But you played Baldur's Gate 3, and you're like, oh, this is awesome. I totally want to play Baldur's Gate 3. And then you try to play D &D, tabletop D&D &D in exactly the same way in balance and style. There'd be a lot of things that wouldn't quite work out. There are some things from BG3 we might be taking into our next 5th edition campaign, though. Um, shove as a bonus action might be fun. Um, I'm also a big fan of making healing potions drinkable as a bonus action. Um, because the action economy of drinking a healing potion in combat is just awful. And then at the same time, I like the idea of making it so that if you do take like a full round to drink the health potion, like carefully, not just like splash it back and half of it dribbles down your face, um, that you don't roll, you just take the maximum. I think that would be fine. I don't think that would break it. Bonus action potions always been a house rule. Yeah, I think I, I suspect that that wouldn't break the game in any way whatsoever. Because using a potion in combat feels bad. Oh, just I've just lost my entire turn to heal 2d4 damage. Oh, I, three. So my, I spent my whole turn healing three points of damage. It might be 2d4 plus two in, in tabletop. I don't remember. Because I don't drink potions. Anyway, let's kill another one of these crazy mages. I'm just going to pull back so he gets away from his thing so we don't have a weird hitbox issue. Oh, you dodged my mega ball. How dare you? That is just absolute rudeness. I can't believe you would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spin your little thing around. Now, if we did invest in the flame rush, um, doing like um, fire resistance shredding, it all of a sudden becomes a thing for bosses to just flame rush them. Because right now, I'm not sure it's worth the, the cast time. Like the flame rush itself does things. Obviously, it gives us runes. It gives us the little like pew pew bonus damage. But I don't think it would hold up um, for single target. I think we're better off spending our time doing this fireball, mega fireball alteration. Um, okay, all these experimental things, I keep getting the traversal skills. Do they all have traversal skill as part of them? I guess that would explain why these guys teleport around. Did I, did I already finish what I was supposed to do here? I think I, I may have. Yeah, all right. Oh, Olsen, I think that's fair, yeah. Homeroom, I've seen. Potion for yourself, bonus action. Force room potion down someone else's throat. Main action. Yeah. It makes sense. I'd also um, thought, like, oh, if it turns out to be a problem, I'll be like, okay, you can have this potion belt that can only fit a maximum of, you know, two or three potions ready access or something like that. Because you can't go rooting around your backpack for it or this or that. But it's like, I think you can probably abstract that away. What do you want? Someone can keep, like, a little, hmm. a little clay pot in their pockets for easy access. You're not gonna go through that many potions in a single combat anyway. All right, so I'm gonna finish this just for now. I don't know where we're gonna go. It's interesting that it opens up the Rune of Dilation now. After using a traversal skill, you gain increased cast speed and movement speed for a short duration. Buff doesn't stack. Doesn't help us with boss fights, but sure does make it nice to, um, to roam around the map. All right, where are we going now for the Oracle's Aid? It's in this time zone, but it must be in one of these different areas. Ah, there you go. I got to go back to the Shining Cove and work our way up there. For some reason, at some point, the nor when you just start the game, if you click on a quest, it zooms the map there. But at some point, that breaks. You want to increase your bookkeeping in exchange for making something easier? Yeah, although different tables will certainly have different um, different tolerances for bookkeeping. Like some tables are happy to do very accurate um, encumbrance tracking because it increases immersion, right? And also like placement, like, and that definitely used to be the thing on like old character sheets. It was definitely very much like, uh, you need to exactly define where this item is. Is it in your backpack versus your saddlebags versus, you know, your pocket versus a pouch on your belt? Like make sure to document it 100% because it's gonna matter. realize I was on three ruins there. I just ended up mega fireballing in midair instead of doing the little pew 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 here.
You play in a game like that? A two second edition game that's been going on longer than I'm alive. Also, why I exist? Wow. Second is Ed is what I started with. I also did play some um uh some OG AD and D when I was in university. Um there was a uh, like a board game in RPG club and someone like broke out the old school stuff. So we did play we actually played the Tomb of Horrors campaign in AD and D. Uh, which is interesting. I remember asking the DM, like, wait, my, my fact was not on here. He's like, he takes out this, like, wheel. <laughs> like, calculate hits in combat. Loved it. I mean, kind of impractical and, you know, not really what you'd, you'd actually want to do day-to-day, -day, but it was an interesting experience. And then 3rd Ed came out. Now, someone could probably look up the year, but 3rd Ed came out while I was at uni. So I'm assuming it came out in 99, 2000, 2001, something like that. I think it came out while I was at uni. Maybe I'm wrong. Did it come out beforehand? Maybe it came out before. Someone, someone will know in this chat. Someone will look up the release date for third edition. It must have been a little later, actually. 3.5 would have been... No, 3.5 would have been 2,000? 2,000 Dungeon Dragon 3rd Edition. Okay, yeah. 3.5 didn't take that long to come out afterwards, but it wouldn't have been the same year. I mean, obviously. 3 was 2,000. 3.5 was 2,003, yeah. Um... And that definitely did at the time when 3.5 was announced. It did, a, a lot of people were kind of sour, like, wait, you're telling me I'm going to have to buy all these books again? Um, but to be fair, 3rd edition was pretty good, but had, like, issues. And overall, most people were like, 3.5 was very well received, from my recollection. Very happy with fifth. Fifth is excellent. What I loved when fifth came out, fifth gave me the the combination of the of the nostalgia of kind of playing second ed, but with clean and modernized rules. That's what it felt like to me with uh, fifth edition. My one thing with fifth edition is there are a few places where it's missing specificity in its rules. And, you know, there's something to be said about open-ended, you know, um, narrative story-based things, right? We don't need a rule for everything. You don't need a rule for, like, tying your shoes. Like, no, no, like, you, characters can just do that. You know, you can, you can put this in. Do we need rules for cooking or not? Like, you know what? No, we can handle that through narration. That's true. But sometimes there are some things that, like, there needs to be more clarity somewhere in there. Uh, there's actually a recent discussion about this on uh, Reddit in a thread I was reading, where like someone said like, okay, let's say your character wants to throw sand in someone's eyes to blind them. It's like, well, in this system, it's just like, okay, it's just a narrative style, so you can kind of say, yeah, whatever, we're just, you know, you just do a roll, it's like a 50-50 chance, just how, however the mechanics are resolving things in there, you just do it. And in other systems, it's like, okay, well, this is just generalized as a combat trick, and here's the rule set for handling that, and whatever. In 5th edition, you are in a bit of an awkward bind, because it's like, um, I mean, are, are, is that a two-hit roll? Do, does it count as an improvised weapon? Is it a saving throw thing? Do I, like, support this? Do I do I just let it happen automatically, because it's cool? And, I mean, sometimes you do do that. You know, what, what do you pull off on the fly that ends up being balanced? Sometimes, and it's okay as a DM, and in fact, this is actually a really good idea. That you should sometimes say, okay, right, listen, we're just going to do it this time here, but I'm not setting a precedent because we might need to refine it one way or another. In this particular situation, tell you what, because it's always more fun for the player to be the active person, uh, you just go ahead and roll it to hit roll. Because why not? But yeah, so there's like this like thing where like a lot of the mechanics in 5e are very well defined and then there's a bunch of situations that don't have definitions and so you're stuck in a system that's barely mechanically driven but has some gaps that being said um i'm a big fan of 5e this is like like a very edge case um criticism 
that I mean no 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 RPG systems are ever gonna be perfect because the mix of like you can't you can't cover every case. And even if you did, it would be insane because your rule book would be so thick and impossible to understand that no one would ever play the game. Giant fireball. Oh, Argolos the the blessed. You look very sparky. Hey, what is it in um, RPGs where they associate, in a lot of games, desert things like scorpions with electricity? I think this is especially prevalent perhaps in um, like JRPGs. So maybe it's in like an Eastern thing. I don't know, maybe I'm just imagining a pattern, but I feel like I've seen a lot of games where like, oh, there's a scorpion type. I bet you it's gonna do lightning damage. Static from the sand, electricity is stingy. Maybe. One RPG I have and I haven't had a chance to play with yet is the um, um, the Avatar RPG. Like Avatar is in The Last Airbender, not as in the Smurfs. Um, I kickstarted it. Uh, I got a really nice addition. It's got multiple settings as well, so you can play like, do you want to play in the effectively the Ang era, the like the end of the Hundred Years War? Do you want to play in the Core era? Do you want to play pre Hundred Years War? Um, so there's nice flexibility. You can play benders, non benders, but I haven't actually played it yet. Got some nice dice. I'm curious if any of you have it. You tried the Avatar system, did not like it. Maybe just a bad DM. Well, that's I mean always a thing. GM and group, right? It makes and breaks things. I'm very lucky to have a really good group of players that are um, diligent and understand rules and also incredibly creative. Both the players and the dungeon masters, uh, I should say, because sometimes we say oh, it. In fact, I uh, we are going to be starting a new 5th edition campaign. Hopefully soon. We probably would have been starting this weekend, except this weekend... I am going to be away. So as a reminder, if you haven't checked the what game, um, I am going to be away for about a week and a half-ish, um, starting this Saturday. So if you do the what game, you can see the date range. So we're going to miss Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, and Monday again. Technically, I'll be home on the Monday, but not in time for the stream. So we're going to stream this Wednesday, and then it's going to be two weeks after that, the next live stream. Now, the oracle, the hey, now I've seen how you handle yourself. I don't know if you actually have to like go up. Normally, they light up when you get close. This is just whatever glass of crap it's just gonna show. Up. I don't know if just entering the map gives you the waypoint in this game. I know that in like Path of Exile, it's really frustrating. Sometimes you get through a map and you just happen to not path where the uh, waypoint was. And like, if you ever have to go back to that zone, you're like, ah, oh, and I have to go like enter it from another place and how frustrating. Thanks the bits. Possible set reruns in normal time. That's not a bad idea. Just so that the streams are still there. I mean, I'm sure from a like, you know, business point of view and all those things, it would be a great idea to have reruns set for that. I'm a little bit worried with how my voice was that I'm not gonna have enough YouTube content for stuff every day. My plan was to have, um, my hope was to have Dwarf Fortress and Victoria 3 every day while I'm gone. I serious doubts that anything close to that is going to happen at this point, which is a shame. Just, just for voice. But we'll see. This post style waypoints, okay, so yeah, you do have to get close enough to them to trigger. They were clumped up enough that I could have gotten the uh, mega fireball there, but that's fine. Let's see. Buried in the slums. She told me. Mega ball! Nagasa. They were the same. To slither through the shadows. Shift Gwaz! Very interesting to bring up Lancer. Have we talked about it before? Because we have been playing a Lancer campaign, which I've never played before. Um, but uh, my. The, the person in our group who's the most common uh, GM in the group 
uh, proposed setting up a Lancer campaign. Yeah, you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and um, and set up a campaign for Lancer, which I'd never heard of or played before. Um, it's a it's an alt setting. So Lancer is a RPG where you're 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 basically playing like like Gundams and shit. Um, it's kind of you you make a character. Your character's in some robot suit in the year five thousand and and shit like that is going on. Um, we are playing a very different setting. We are playing in an alt history nineteen thirties. Um, and the 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 answer is mechs in the game instead of being actually fairly like in the in the, the vanilla lancer setting the suits are basically just like human suits you're mostly in right like they're just mostly like power suits um but ours like we've changed the scale and everything so our mechs are like massive things with like couple of dozen crews in them and things like that we've just scaled everything up so the, the all the all the game balance is exactly the same but like our hexes are like 30 meter hexes or, and shit like that which is great because the guns actually have a much more reasonable range because you look at some of the game the guns it's the same thing when you play battle tech and all these things you look at the guns you're like okay the guns can like barely go further than i can throw but because of our scale change in lancer it's like okay the target's two kilometers away Oh yeah, no, I can I can hit that with my artillery as I should. Uh, so and it's turned out fun. Like my uh, demonac has made a wonderful, wonderful campaign setting for it with a great story, and it turns Lancer's a great game. Uh, the base rulebook for it is um, is there's a free PDF for it. There's like also a pay version. There's got more details and various things like that. Uh, but as a player, the free version is definitely enough. Um, and if you're willing to like just make certain like guesses about how certain things work, you can get away with it just running the game as well. But I think the free version doesn't have like all the necessarily the NPC creation rules and things like that for enemies, but we've mostly been fudging it. It's been working okay. Um, Three. yeah, and it's no, great fun. Told me great fun combat. The courage of a Ruby Nagasa. I didn't expect this. But it's one step closer to the Art by the dude who does KSBD. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it's a manga or an anime or something based on a the content that we're talking about and b the fact that i don't know manga and anime so that would be a big hole in my knowledge kill six billion demons okay that's a great title i don't know if i've heard that title before what's webcomic no the art in lancer is fantastic lots of mech variety basically you know what lancer rpg is it's Warframe tabletop. Not exactly, but if I want to do a tabletop RPG version of Warframe, I would start with the Lancer rule set. Okay, yes, you're right. right? Like, you start thinking about it, you're like, hold on a second. Like, Quill, you're crazy. You're on the crack. Wait, maybe this weirdly makes sense? Because in Lancer, you've got the, um, what do they call them? Like the, the like the mech suits, the Lancers. The I can't remember what, what term they use in the game. Um, but, you know, you can swap them as you level. There's different things and there's ways to customize stuff. And like, it's sort of like equipping guns. All oh, right, the Lancers are the pilots. What are the actual like machines? Well, they're literally called frames in Lancer as well. That's right. And there's some weird ones. Like in Warframe, I just unlocked the um, the Limbo frame. I think that's what it's called, Limbo. Uh, and it's weird. This and it's... <laughs> I, I don't think I'm actually going to use it for anything real. I'm just leveling it up because then you get your mastery points from it. It's weird. Like alternates between two different planes of existence. Okay. Fools. Hey, it's Limbo, the guy who mapped himself at existence. Yeah, exactly. I mean, very funny. It is. It's just a. It's just a side quest to unlock a frame. It's not a major. Well, I mean, it might relate to like larger story stuff as a whole. But I have theories. 
which I will be discussing when I get around to making my um, my Warframe video that we go through. Um, so people told me, people specifically requested, there's a quest called like the Two Dreamers or the Second Dream. I think it's called the Second Dream. Um, that they want to see me do that. And the prereq to it, I don't remember what it's called. It's got some some name or something. It's like five letters with a couple A's. Um, and I, I'm at there, and I've been intentionally not progressing past that. Nata, yeah. I feel like Nata might be the name of a frame as well. I have done a side quest. So again, I've been I've been trying not to pursue the story quest, but I did a score a side quest called the Deadlock Protocol. Um which I feel might be hints about certain story things. I've also done the, um, uh, what's it called? The, the weird alternate start thing with the second tutorial, the something paradox or puzzles, Javuri, something like that. It's like, it's, everything's leading me to think there's a lot of weird ass timey wimey shit that's going to be going on in the story. Like, is there some sort of time loop? Something. I'm trying to think, I'm like, I, I, I want to make a Doctor Who reference. It's not that. There's, like, some other piece of media that I'm like, oh, it's giving me that kind of vibe. I am not a man of many pockets. Mm hmm Devour is technically post-main quest? Because hmm. for a while, because I, I, I did take a look at a guide before I started Warframe. Um little run thing and in that like the guide for beginners like you begin with a choice between warframe or daviri to start you know either one is fine because it'll all come together at some point now i didn't see that it didn't ask me that it just put me into the warframe and then gave me the daviri thing as a side quest later so i'm assuming some things just changed from when this guide was made and i definitely you definitely go through a second tutorial when you do the debris opening yeah, it's very timey-wimey everything's a cycle what has happened before is going to happen again. I'm like, all right. They removed the Duvery stuff. Well, they didn't remove it. But maybe some I'm aspects of it. Man of many pockets. I think the um, the Nightwave stuff is saying something about completing like three Duvery puzzles as well, which I'm like, I don't know. Hidden so close. A word of advice. Don't ask her about the Diamond Matrons. You'll regret it. Oh, they removed that as a starting point. Yeah. Which I think is good, because, like, if you've never played Warframe before, right, you get into this game, the very first thing is like, hey, do you want to do option A or option B? And, like, I don't know what the differences are. I don't know if I'm locking into something. Like, what's going on with my life? I'm just going to take the Rune of Dilation. I suspect we're going to do some respects at some point. But for now, we're just going to keep going fast and not worry about the specificals. Um, right, I got two points in here, so I can put points in the flammability, which is what I want to do. And for Flame Rush, Rune Ember is now Pierce Enemies. That actually sounds fairly useful. We'll grab that. Uh, casting Flame Rush creates additional Rune Embers. Oh, on cast instantly, so regardless of the channeling length. Yeah, that sounds useful. Oh, we've got another specialization ready to go as well. Um, right, I finished that. Oh, right, I started putting points in here. You know what? Just keep going that. That's going to be okay. Do we use anything else? Oh, Frostwall is a Rune Master thing. Create a wall of frost and persist for six seconds. Enemies inside the wall take cold damage over time and receive a stack of chill every 0.25 seconds. You can have up to one active frost wall at a time. Enemies that reach the wall at least 0.2 seconds after it's created are frozen for twice as long as the walls existed up to... Right, okay. Well, maybe we should mess with it. We'll put some specs in here. I mean, we don't have anything that's like... making fire. Oh, hang on. We can turn it into a firewall. That's good, because we're doing fire damage. There. Brand the invader. Brands on 10 tre trespass. Brand of trespass and ailment, which deals 400 fire damage over three seconds, but does not stack. Okay, let's do that. I mean, it's probably pretty damage over time kind of scaling, but here. Area and duration. And we'll put it... Nope, not glacier. You were great for leveling, though, I gotta say. Frost wall. Ooh. And yeah, there's something about, like, there's something I can do to my flame rush where if I pass through a frost wall, it'll buff. Yeah, you took the, the 
fuck up good. Not do that. Oh, I'm in a town. Like, why? Why can I not do that? We're in a town again. Inventory's full. Can I help here? It's four tiers of intelligence. More armor. It's got the built-in elemental resist. We're going to lose the increased elemental damage and the crit strike chance, which is nice. And the leech. We can craft some things back on. That's kind of interesting. That's my book that's still too high level. Although we're getting kind of close to it again. Um, at what point do we get rid of Avarice, right? I mean, it's great for keeping us up and alive. Same thing as our chest piece, right? This leech stuff, that's leech on crit as well. Um, it's great for keeping us alive. It's a frack ton of mana and health. Some more base spell damage, but I think we're still using Firestarter's Torch. Speaking of, we got another one, apparently. You know what? I can sell this one. I've got like 15 copies of it at this point. Okay, I'm just going to make a little bit of room. Because we only got 15 minutes left, so we're just going to keep going. I'm not going to worry about swapping in a year oh, right now. Yes. There's nothing, um, nothing more recorded for Warframe yet, but the plan is to do... Oh, shit, I had more points than I thought. I was just going to put in three. Or, like, or two. I think I clicked three. Uh, there's no Brainiac over I here. That's fine. Uh, I'll that. probably get rid of the extra point here so that we can put something out. But yeah, um, I'm planning on doing probably two videos, one for each of the next two story quests. Currently the plan. I don't know if I can do the second dream one or whatever it's called which is the one that most people want to see. I don't know if um, if I need a particular planet unlocked for that. I may or may not have that unlocked yet. Um, but I can start the, the quest before, the Nada quest. Now, um, someone might be able to put in, like, is the Nada quest the, one of the ones that was like, oh, please, please include this one. Maybe the Nada quest is like, not that crazy, not all plot twisty. Maybe it's not as important for a court. May it let me know if it's not as critical because maybe what I should do tonight is just play through the not a quest by myself for fun and then push forward to the point where I can do the second dream. Oh, we have a discussion about uh, ice sludging with GMs. That's always an interesting and tricky situation. Yeah, I feel like the Nada Quest is a precursor. Like the the feeling I had was that the the story is kind of cohesive there. You know, like up until now, fools. I don't. There hasn't been a, a, a past the entrance. Like there's been lots of quests and stuff with story. Um, but there hasn't felt like the same sort of strong. Like oh, this is the plot of the game. Kind of this is the big the big deal part of it. 
right now it's mostly just you know well we had to bust ourselves out from someone who was you know trying to capture us for other nefarious means and then otherwise i'm going around doing good things and mostly helping people being a big damn hero but my feeling is that potentially with the nada quest if it starts the hold on we're gonna drop some serious effing lore on you and change your entire perspective of the game Not a part of the main quest line yet. Because there's, um, when you open up your quest page in the codex in Warframe, it is nice that there's a drop down menu that you can separate quests. They, um, there's story quests, which I'm assuming is the main, the sort of main campaign, uh, side quests and Warframe quests. Um, and certainly I've done some, some story quests at this point, but yeah, there wasn't, it didn't feel quite the same. No complaints. So the story's good. The voice acting's good. The vibe's great. It'll be interesting to see something become very meaty. I have uh, I have some notes. So I have my I have a, a file open. My Warframe open questions note. What's a Tenno? Don't I do not want to know the answer to this right now. These are things I'm going to talk about this in the video, but like these are things that like I feel like haven't been answered by me yet. Or, uh, I haven't been told yet. I don't have those answers yet, and I suspect these are things that are actually going to come out. Like our character is a Tenno who controls or possesses or is these warframes that we actually do things with but what's the tenno itself i don't know that answer yet um yeah am i controlling slash possession the warframe is the warframe just a machine or is it organic what are the junction specters the first time first couple of times the junction specter i was like okay yeah we just so we got i gotta kill this little boss to open up the next level of the world that's pretty normal but then like i've done four, five, six, seven, uh, some number of them at this point. And I'm like, it hasn't actually been explained what the hell these things are. They're, they're specters, but they're warframes. Like they're same warframes I can get access to are these things guarding these, these junctions. What's their deal? Especially with the fact that the deadlock protocol introduced some, like some other things called specters. And there was this protea thing. I'm like, yeah, see, this is just leading to like more kind of questions. Um, all oh, right. Yeah. Um, is it related to deadlock protocol slash nefanyo slash granum slash protea timey wimey stuff? What's a specter protocol? What's an imprint behavior? Which you just heard this note from this granum guy saying about imprinting maybe on warframes. Like, what's that? Also, who were the Orican? I don't think I have an answer for that yet. They seem to be like the ancient, like super advanced race or culture or something. And were they involved in making the warframes or this or that? Also, what's Ordus's past? The like AI on our ship who has memory loss? And occasionally, like, drop some weird, really weird dialogue, including one line I want to remember, which is, do you remember the old war, Operator? Ordis seems to have misplaced those memories. What old war? Well, I mean, at some point, the Warframes were theoretically made to be, well, Warframes. They were tools of war. Yeah, what's the story there? What's our deal? And I, I, again, I'm not looking at chat right now. I honestly do not want answers currently. These are questions that I have, and it'll be interesting to see how many of them might be getting immediately addressed versus not. And I'm sort of expecting maybe there's some weird timey-wimey time loop stuff going on. Especially with having done the the debris intro quest thing. Can I point out like the music did an awesome drop in this game? Or in Warframe, I have both of them. But yeah, there's some decent music in here. I remember when I first played this um, with Point Eight, um, the sound wasn't actually that great, but um, a lot of the uh, spell ability sounds and things like that were sort of development placeholders. Point Nine introduced kind of a, another pass on the audio, which improved it a lot. Now, no one's gonna say that like the common animations and the sound is the level of hey, Quill, pay um, attention to Diablo Four. Right. That's what that's what Blizzard does with its budget, right? The art assets and sound and things like that are are stupendous. The animations are great. I have no idea what to do with this frost wall. I'm not using it currently, which might still be the case. Mm -hmm.
with fudging dice, because people are still talking about that, fudging dice in a tabletop, I mean, the ideal goal is, just, let's assume, not a combat situation, right? This is a social situation or a picks locks or this or that or whatever. You know, you're in a place where, like, say the players failed a whole bunch of times. The ideal thing is that you sort of do, like, a Baldur's Gate thing, where it's like, well, okay, let's make failing interesting. What is this? Stargazer's collection, a circle of fortune once looked above the clear skies of the desert. I am not well, that's new. Of many pockets. That's a tier, just a single trade on it, but it's a tier five max craftable elemental resist. We only got 17 forging potentials, so it's not like we can make a god tier armor out of this, but it's starting in a pretty good place. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm, I'm just going to leave those there. They, they might be really good, but in the interest of just moving on and doing inventory management in between things. Getting M. Mm -hmm. Did I get a unique idol? Or is this weird color coding, maybe? Oh, yeah, Singularity. That is... Hold on. We did get a unique idol. It might be time to adjust the uh, loot filter, actually, to be more strict. Oh, yeah, I do love these, these grinders here. Um, Chimera's... No, wait. Right here. Singularity needs to be level 42. 18% more hit damage if you have only one Singularity equipped. You cannot deal critical strikes. Right. Yes, I have seen this before. So we would throw this into our idols. It prevents you from critting. And you can only have one of these in here. But it does give you 18% more hit. And I think this more is like... I think it's like Path of Exile, where more is really more, as opposed to increased, which is just increasing the base. Um, and doesn't multiply the same way. Obviously, we're not going to use it because we are doing crit things. Um, I think that might be very good on people who are doing damage or time. Is it, is it hits do it? More hit damage. Okay. So it doesn't increase damage over time. It's only for people who are doing direct bursts of damage and don't care about crits. Well, I mean... You can still be doing damage over time stuff, because most of these builds will. Most of these builds will be adding in, like, some Ignite or Bleed or something like that. But it's not going to boost those specifically. So if you were doing a damage over time focused build, it might not be as synergistic. I can't remember, in this game, can um, damage over time, do the individual ticks crit? I feel like the answer is no, but I don't remember. And some games can. Some games have it so that individual ticks of a damage over time effect can crit. I feel like this one is a no. Dots can't crit in this game. Alright, dude. Like, settle down, man. In this fight, the, um... The using the flame rush feels pretty good, because I can power up to two ticks to generate the, the splash damage. And then in theory, if we had spec into things, depending on things, we could be doing a bunch of burst damage by igniting, uh, by igniting, setting off some ignites, or 
doing more um, fire resistance shred. Oh, was this on cooldown? It doesn't have a cooldown. Maybe it didn't have the mana to set it off. I am not a man. I am not a man of many pockets. Like I'm just saying, I'm not a man. I am a meat pot. Thoughts can crit, crit and grim dawn. That's right. Also, your um, uh, and that's probably what I had in my head. Your effects from like your um your constellation stuff um can also proc on each tick of a dot. Um. Oh yeah, like so subtle. There's not a map marker. <laughs> More damage to bosses and rares, 1% per point. This effect is doubled if you have an active raw rune, which we always do, or if you pass through a frost wall. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll do this. This is going to be increasing our single target damage. And the raw runes are the ones generated by fire, which obviously we're doing all the time. This is the... Come quickly, on my signal. Go to the center of the device and get ready. I'll get us out of here. Whee! The uh, you're overgo. I will hopefully. I, will I do like the Eula stuff. It's a good example of timey wimey stuff they did in this game. So we're meeting here a very ancient and maybe undead Eula here who acts like she knows us and then later on we're going to be meeting a very young and very alive Yuna who's going to be weirded out by the fact that we seem to know her you don't know me game is so easy to just keep playing forever. I mean, that that's an action RPG in a nutshell, right? A dang shame that my voice is still in such a rough spot. It's such a good thing I'm going on holidays. Uh, let's pop into the Verdant Lake here. Do you have a recommendation for starting class in last, um, last epoch? Um, I don't know. And I'm sure the thing is with 1.0 releasing like late next week, mid next week, something like that. Um, the balance and stuff is probably all going to be quite different. So it's hard to answer. I would definitely say like, depending on your experience, you, you know, if you're experienced with action RPGs, you'll already kind of innately know this. I'm just going to start ignoring some gear for a sec here. Um, but your most valuable thing when you're starting one of these is I mean, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. One of the nice things about this game, uh, unlike um, unlike Grim Dawn, where it's very easy in the talent tree to spread yourself out too much, which you should definitely do. You should definitely focus on things. Here, you're really you're you're innately going to be focused, forced to concentrate on a few things, which is good. You're going to want to make sure to get AOE stuff because that's the biggest thing for like clearing through the story is going to be about doing area of effect damage, so you can just clear out sort of just trash and regular obstacles. I guess I got the waypoint. I don't actually have a quest here, so I can just go back through the rift. And then the other thing is you really do have to pay attention to your fences because dying sucks. I mean, it's hard because like one of the best ways to not die is also to just kill things fast. It's like, well, I want more DPS and more life. And yeah, so the answer is just get everything. But yeah, in terms of class, I don't know. I, um... Summoners are always fun in these. I literally have no room for even this shit. Oh, I'm gonna... uh, One thing I liked about the Primalist class, so I did feel like the Primalist was kind of rough for the first 20 levels. 
Um, well, that's pretty typical. And a lot of these games, like, you know, your character doesn't have a lot of options early on, so a lot of times they feel bad. Honestly, this uh, spellcaster here felt really bad for the first few levels. Um, and that is great. But the Primalist has a lot of different branches that work out. So the Primalist is a thing that sort of becomes the Beastmaster and the Brood and all those things. And you can have lots of summons, or you can just have one. You can have just one big summon. You can turn yourself into a bear and smash people, or you can turn yourself into a uh, Spragane, like a fey creature type thing, and you know, you're more of a spellcaster. So there's a lot of interesting options you could try there. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't played through all of them enough. This is just a starter. I think they're all pretty viable. And unlike something like Pack of the Exile, you do not need a build guide at all for leveling. Respecking is fairly easy. You know, there's lots of build guides that exist for this, which tend to be optimizing for the end game. Mm -hmm. At some point, you'll want to pick, like, maybe an element or an affliction. You're like, oh, bleeds. Bleeds are cool. Okay, right. so we'll focus on I'm some bleeds. It and it probably won't be exclusively so, be because there's other shit you're just going to pick up. Like, we're sort of doing Ignite and Crits, which is fine. But that's just, you know, general advice, right? You can apply to any class. And every class can be built in so many different ways. Like, tankiness versus support versus range shit. It tends to always be available for most things. Is green my green is my most colorified thing? A lot of necrotic resistance on that, but Ugh. like if there's a Grim Dawn, I would have a lot more specific um, recommendations because I've played more. I've also researched more. Part of it, Last Epoch doesn't have quite the huge player base currently, although it's doing fine. Um, which means there aren't quite as many guides and resources and discussions. It's also not as old, right? When you're talking about something like Path of Exile or Grim Dawn, it's been around so long that there's tons of theory crafting that's been developed for it. Now, some of it, you know, isn't up to date to the latest patch, but a lot of it still applies. I am not a man. I am not a man of many pockets. Drops a unique item. Unique two-handed staff. Hello. Is this always here? A man of many oh my god, I'm full. Watch me die and then lose this unique. I mean, it's not going to be a high-level unique, so it probably doesn't matter. But it's still going to annoy me. I am not a man of many I guess we can see it. Curse of Perseverance. Ne plus one to necrotic spells. Increase necrotic damage. Hungering souls. I don't know if I have one of these. I probably do, but if I don't, that's going to be great for, like, a Lich-type character. It's actually so much spell damage that I'm, I'm almost wondering about using it as is. It would place both my main hand and my off hand. So we're just going to make our way to some little logical conclusion point. Maybe it's just a waypoint, or maybe we'll have a boss fight or something. We'll be wrapping up for today. Wednesday might be more of this, or could be Grim Dawn to just have a compare and contrast session, or Path of Exile. Again, same logic, just to look at some of these, or I'll, I'll crack open Torchlight, or I'll play K KSB. I don't want to start anything that's um, long-term. I don't want to start a new grand strategy campaign just because I'm going on the, the, the break. For the week and a half. When we get back, we'll start something more long term. Could be Crusader Kings. Oh, we're on a ramp. Like, why did I not charge anywhere?
that's not the biggest issue. this game has had um this ramp worked fine for some reason this game has had some issues with its movement skills especially when in, in multiplayer there was a lot of rubber banding for a long time and just sync issues with like actually hitting things with your movement skills your favorite mobile game through the ages and splendor if i don't have enough time for through the ages i like uh i like board games and board games work very well as mobile games what else have i played not that many because um because i work from home right i'm not commuting i'm not doing this and that i don't um i don't actually spend a lot of time on my on my phone on my mobile device like that I really don't do much. Every now and again, when I'm going on a, um, when I'm going on a trip, you know, I'm gonna be traveling, I'm gonna be flying. I like look up or ask, I ask on Discord for advice for things. 102% increased spell critical strike chance, 61% increased lightning, chance to slow and ignite on hit. Lightning damage doesn't do anything for us. Although we could do a complete respec and go back to being a lightning oriented spellcaster. The rest of it's pretty good. I mean, arguably, I might want something other than a chance to slow. But that's pretty insane. It also does add a frack ton of spell damage. 81% increased damage over time. And it's got a built-in chance to ignite on hit. Um. Huh. Now, of course, we could always YOLO. By the way, you can use this as a little extra storage space over here. I don't know if I trust that when, for logging out, though. I don't know if this maintains if you log out. Um, we can re-roll these. You can be like, okay, well, you know what? I don't actually lean lightning damage, so I'm going to do the thing where we... Um, I guess it's the glyph, right? Glyph of Chaos. We upgrade and re-roll to something else, but it could land on something even more useless. That's got so much potential. Listen, if we play more last, e last Epoch on um, on Wednesday, we might be back with a Lightning Mage. And it's worth doing from time to time with your level up build. Despec all your skills, respec entirely new ones, or respec some of the same ones, but with a radically different um, like path down the tree. Something that changes the element or changes the way it works. You know, like change it from a manual cast to an auto cast or vice versa. Because you don't know what you're going to like until you get there. I mean, I'd started off planning a lightning build. Or just sort of falling into that because I want to be Palpatine, I guess. Probably the same reason I picked Volt in Warframe. Um, and then part of it is because, of course, we had the Firestarter's Torch sitting around. But just in general, with this Flame Rush, it turned out to be very synergetic to just go with a fire build. And again, whatever build we are playing now has 0% of lock-in for what our endgame is. I am not a man of many pockets. Endgame um, in this kit, like your endgame build is basically when you get certain key uniques. Again, in... In my opinion, a good ARPG design isn't that... Oh, so this is a, a rare shard here. I am not a valuable one. Many um, uniques shouldn't be better than the rares. What uniques should be is they should do weird things. Build enabling things. Which is what you see in this game, Path of Exile, Grim Dawn. A unique is something that's transformative. You're using it not because of its raw stats, but because of some weird shit that it and only it does that you're building a combo around. And it's what should be that, like, if you took, like, 20 Rune Masters and stood them all in a line, they should all feel different because... Oh, there we go. Finally hit it. Kept shooting over its head. Unique Scepter. Oh! It's, mm, it is something different. Um... Hazel Root. 
chance to cast Thorn Shield on yourself when you directly use a physical skill. Oh, plus one spell, physical damage per human. This is a good one for uh, Primalist, for like Druid types. That rat was the final boss, yeah. Okay, why are we wrapping it up here? Okay, I'm gonna go into the zone and we're gonna find the waypoint. We're gonna wrap this up. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. I cannot do that. Oh, because it's a town. I thought I saw spirits there. I'm like, am I just lagging? No, this is a great time for us to stop. Perfect. Ah, I can refer I the heart of the citadel is beyond. There is an I'm when he fled. Cool. All right. Now that's great. We're gonna read. Uh, you said that two uh, two uh, waypoints ago. I know. Um, but turns out I like to talk. Uh, we're gonna wrap it up here. We're gonna raid a kiss for luck in a second. Our next live stream will be on Wednesday. Who knows what it'll be on Wednesday? Um, if you're on the Discord, we'll probably have a conversation about that. But I'm kind of enjoying some ARPG stuff. It doesn't, there's not as many people. It never gets as many views. But the people who like ARPGs, man, we really love them, don't we? Oh. So thanks a lot for coming out, everyone. And I'll see you on Wednesday. Give a kiss for luck some love for me. It's for luck. Enter. There we go. Bye-bye.